Welcome into a special emergency edition of the DNVR Rockies podcast. I, of course, am your host, Drew Creaseman, managing editor of DNVR Rockies. With me for this one is our manager of social media and a huge baseball fan, maybe a little bit less of a Rockies fan these days, Michaela Perkins. Um, oh, I, I almost forgot to shout out our guys over at StravaCraft Coffee. Such such an emergency pod today. I forgot to mention, brought to you, of course, by Strava Craft Coffee. Use that promo code DMBR20. You'll get 20% off. Uh, we, of course, are doing this because the Colorado Rockies have just held a press conference featuring owner Dick Monfort and GM Jeff Breidich and Will asking the question, what the hell was that? Uh, Michaela, the, the press conference ended <laughs> with Woody Page asking Dick Monfort, one, why have you not yet fired Jeff Breidich? And two, why have you not yet fired yourself? Yeah, that was not what I was expecting. I was definitely not anticipating Woody Page to be dunking on Monfort for the press conference. It was an epic question, I will say. It definitely made my life. Um, he basically was just like, have you thought about firing Breitage? Why haven't you yet? And how, are you going to fire yourself? Like, epic. It made my whole day. I laughed out loud. Um, I think, you know, Monfort took it in stride. He answered it professionally, um, as professionally as you can when someone just asked you why you haven't fired yourself yet. But um, yeah, that was definitely an unexpected turn to the press conference. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be giving a whole lot of credit today uh, for what was said or done. There is one thing. There's a couple things I thought might have happened that didn't, that I do want to say. Uh, one thing I thought they might do was come out really, really defensive and be combative mm -hmm. with us and, you know, deny things or, or especially at questions like that questions they have been very defensive at before in the past. They really weren't here. They didn't say the right thing. There wasn't a right thing to say, but I will say they showed just in their faces, not necessarily in their words, in their body language, more contrition than I think I've ever seen these guys do when, and, and the other part of that was I thought they might try to come out and sell us a bill of goods try to tell us, no, actually the trade's really good. You guys are underselling these five guys we got back. We got plans for the money we're gonna sign. Try and they didn't really do that either. They basically admitted like, no. In fact, very early on, Dick Monfort said something about, you know, the, the best cost effective move was to take back the lowest return possible. And our guy, AJ Hafley retweeted that when I when I said that quote, I was like, you're saying the quiet part out loud, man. Like, aren't yeah. you at least, but, but they didn't, to, I guess to their credit, they didn't, act like we were all fools and try to pretend like this was actually a cool thing. Right. I, I totally agree. And I'm happy that they didn't take that route because I think that would have made everybody more upset than they already are. Um, you know, any way you look at this trade, it's a horrible trade for the Rockies. You know, they just gave up the best third baseman in baseball for no, basically nothing in return. And so if they had taken that approach at the press conference, I feel like that would have pissed everyone off way more than they already are. Because in my point of view, this whole trade is indefensible. There is any way you slice right. this, it's not okay. It's not a good, I don't think it's a good business decision. It's obviously not a good competitive decision. You just lost the best third baseman in baseball. So, you know, they don't really have any room to be condescending or to defend themselves because it's not defensible. Like this was a disaster for the Rockies and this will probably go down as one of the worst, if not the worst trades in the history of professional sports, and I will stand by that. I think that's as crazy as it sounds. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to say uh, about something like this. Got a lot of great comments here in the section. Remember, you got to be subscribed to our YouTube channel. Smash that like button. Do all that stuff. Really appreciate it. Um, but there was one up here from our guy. I, I'm, there's a bunch of letters in here. Uh, Gabe Guerrero. There we go. I can, if I put them apart, you know, when they put the names together, it's hard, but th this was, I think the worst part of it, and it may be accurate. So it's just that at a time where no one wants to hear was there was a, they basically came out for the first time today and said, Nolan Arenado demanded a trade. He asked to be traded. He wanted out. We couldn't convince him not to get out. And so it was all just about us doing the best we felt like we could. But I do think some of that came off as, you know, hey, this was a Nolan Arenado problem, not a Colorado Rockies problem. And they were asked that at one point, like, how is this not an organizational failure? And uh, that's that, that's just brutal. I, I missed the opportunity at a follow up on mine because I asked Dick Monford about being too involved in baseball decisions. And 
he gave what I thought was a decent answer, but the opportunity I missed, and then it got kind of swallowed up by Woody Page's much more direct version of why not fire yourself, which I'm not sure how helpful that is, honestly. It may feel good, but the question I should have asked in follow-up that as the similar thing, but as maybe a constructive question is, why not hire a team president? I really, really wish I would have asked that given the opportunity yeah. to the owner just now. Like, is this not the perfect one. time to come in and have somebody say, mistakes like this can't happen in the future let's introduce a new element because they outright admitted this basically shouldn't have happened and then they poured some salt on the wound of the dj lemayhew thing today admitting oh. that shouldn't have happened like they didn't even have to say that but he basically admitted both of these guys wanted to stay here wanted to be here and planned on spending the rest of their careers here and it didn't happen because that's all they could come up with like that's bad yeah no it's so bad it's horrific, honestly, that you have a generational talent in DJ LeMahieu, a generational talent in Nolan Arenado, and you can't retain either of those two. And it's not looking very good for Trevor Story or Charlie Blackman at this point. Like, at what point do you look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, maybe the problem isn't the players that we're losing, it's the people who are managing the players. Because it is an epic failure of seismic proportions that they have lost two generational players in the span of three years, and they're both still employed. I don't understand how that happens. I don't understand why that's happening. But the worst part of it all is both DJ and Nolan said that they intended to spend the rest of their careers on the Colorado Rockies roster, and they neither of them are currently on the roster. So please explain to me how Breidich is still employed, and how Dick still owes the team, or how they haven't made any major adjustments to the front office when they both have lost generational talents in the, in the span of three years. Right. Yeah, no, it, uh, and, and Michaela today was in on the uh, Nolan Arenado press conference that was happening at the same time over with the Cardinals. She was a two-way player right there playing five tools. I, I, I was stuck in one because I, I didn't know when they were going to call my name, but it, it, it's like Rockies fans are just getting hit from both sides. They're getting brutalized by this because at the same time that – Dick Monfort and Jeff Breidich are basically saying, yeah, he wanted out. And they were asked point blank, you know, Jeff, was this because you poisoned the relationship with him? Could you do a better job? And he basically said, yeah, I probably could. So, so yeah, that that's very much to your point, Mac. If you've got the guy over there in his new uniform going, I didn't want to leave. I didn't intend to leave. I don't even have bad feelings toward the people over there. And yeah. them saying, well, the only reason he's gone is because he hated us, basically. That's, you know, it's just like, come on, dude. You're right. There's, I have long shied away from the word accountability because I think people just, people love firing other people to make themselves feel better and, and, and in sports. And I think it's way overdone. But the absolute obscene lack of accountability here right. is just, and to, yeah, you're, you're sitting there watching Nolan. That had to hurt. Yeah. I mean, it was painful because, you know, Nolan is Nolan, and he made it very clear in the press conference when he was talking to St. Louis media that he has nothing bad to say about the Rockies. He's not going to sit there and say anything bad about the Rockies. Uh, you know, he was even asked point blank, is the relationship with your previous general manager, Breidich, the reason that pushed you to ask for a trade if that's in fact what happened? Because I think that a uh, media member who asked that heard from our press conference that the relationship was sour. I mean, everyone in baseball knows that. He wasn't happy with Breidich, but, um, and you know, no one flat out said, look, I, I don't have any ill feelings towards the Rockies. I'm not going to sit here and say anything bad about them. Um, you know, the relationship with Jeff is what it is. It is what it is. And that's all he said about it. So that is all to me, all I need to know that, you know, that was the, basically the reason that he left in. I, to go back to the earlier point about didn't um, I ask you like a week ago whether or not Dick Monfort yeah. would ever choose Jeff Breidich yeah. over Nolan Arenado? We were like, no, right? <laughs> <laughs> Literally picked Jeff Breidich over Nolan Arenado. But go back to the earlier point of yeah. you know the rock of Monfort trying to make it sound better by saying Nolan asked for a trade. You know, you asked me also a couple weeks ago if Nolan asked for a trade, will that make it easier to let him go? I think I figured out the answer. And the answer is no, because <laughs> nope. no one should have never, ever, ever been pushed to the point where he felt like he needed to ask for a trade. It should have never gotten that far. If, you know, he was feeling upset with Breitich, I would, as an owner of the Rockies, I'd have been like, bye Breitich, pack your bags, see you later, have a good one. I don't want Nolan to be upset with anybody in this front office. Have a good day. 
But the fact that he was pushed to the point to where he felt like he needed to ask for a trade because his relationship with Breitich was non-repairable or whatever it may have been, it should have never happened. It should have been kiboshed at that point, and he should still be on the Rockies. So for Monfort to say, uh, you know, Nolan asked for a trade, so we had to get the max amount of return that we could because he might have opted out next season, I call bullshit because it should have never gotten to that point. It should have never made Nolan that upset and it's not excusable. It's not a reason to trade him. That's exactly right. That is 100% exactly right. And then they basically, without having to, admitted that they did the same thing with DJ LeMayhew, where it's like they could have kept him if they had tried. And then Dick tells this story about hitting, sitting with Hal Steinbrenner and telling him how awesome DJ LeMayhew's going to be. And like, no, you got to play him more. It's like, like cool. How they about you play him? him. He was on your team. What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what kind of nonsense? So I want to see. There, there's a bunch of quotes here. Maybe I'll, I'll. But, but since you were talking about this particular part of it. I want to see people's reactions, see if I can share my screen here. Drew's got the technology hand working. Don't worry, folks. Always super smooth at this stuff. You know what it is. Uh, but this one at the top here. I have anguished for many sleepless nights, wondering why, after he was asked why Nolan Arenado wanted to leave. And then you see the other quotes about how it was his choice. You see Jeff Breidich with the very soft, I think Trevor Story will continue to be around. Uh, but, but particularly that quote today, I was like, you anguished many sleepless nights. You don't have the young man's cell phone number. You can't call him up and be like, Nolan, what's the problem? And Nolan be like, you know, Dick, this guy in the front office really pissing me off. You get rid of him. Everything else is fine. We couldn't have done that a year right? ago. You are the owner of the team. All of the decisions for the most part go through you, or at least you know about what's going on of the team that you own. So <laughs> the player on the team that you own is upset. Pick up your phone and call him and say, hey, um, I hear you're not very happy. So what can I do to make this better? Because I want you to be on this roster for the next several years. Right. Where does that not like cross his mind if he's anguishing over, oh, Nolan, I, I know Nolan's upset, you know, why? If you're anguishing, then call, pick up the phone and call him and ask him what you can do to make the situation better instead of cutting your ties and picking a general manager that clearly has no idea what the hell is going on to run your team. It's, it's amazing. My boss called me to check in after the Nolan Arenado thing. Like, all right, how you doing? You handling this? Can I give you some help in any way? How you doing? What's going on out there? You know, it's like, how do, how do they not have this level of communication? The idea that he could go for a year anguishing over why is Nolan Arenado mad at us and not come to an answer to that, that it's sort of, whereas Tate says, either the Rockies are liars or they're terrible communicators. I'm going to go and, and, and honestly, I'm not sure they're they're liars, or at least not like especially good ones. But <laughs> uh, I really do think a lot of it is poor communication, just ego, not willing to admit things, especially publicly that they would probably more admit privately. We, Jeff Breidich did for the first time in in his tenure as GM make an unequivocal, absolute statement about blaming himself, with no, you know so-and-so's got to play better or this that or the other he did take one moment today to say you know maybe after he chugged down a couple of breck brews certainly after or, or before I, I was ready to chug down a couple of these tasty breck brews uh, the exact quote I'll, I'll see if i can find it again here in, in my grouping of quotes was you know if you want to place the blame on someone put it on me and while i very much appreciate the sentiment it is kind of ironic that the first time he's really come out and done that is for a move that was definitely more about Dick Monfort than himself, which Dick also meant said in, in answering my question that he was the one that made this happen. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. All right. So where is um, Kenneth comes in with a little super chat here. I blame the failed expensive bullpen Freeland falling off a cliff doll injury history and Wade Davis home game struggles. I mean, all of that's a part of it for sure, but all of those things can be overcome if you continue to try to go at it with this team. Now that they've given up, now that they've, they've gotten rid of Nolan Arenado, and Dick also tried to sell us today on, it's a competitive team. Look, man, no, it's not. 
not as currently constituted. And if anyone was going to give them the benefit of the doubt for being a competitive team as constituted, it'd be Mr. Lost Boy over here. Right? Right. No, they're not. No, but, they're not competitive. Yeah, to, to, to Kenneth's point, like, the GM has to be able to roll with mistakes like that. Those can't cost you. That's like saying, you know, I spent too much money at the bar. I've gone out to movies too many times in a normal world. Maybe I went to a concert. Shoot, now I got to sell my house. Like, what the hell happened? Like, that's <laughs> no, 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 no. So I get what you're saying, but this well, has I been think, so I think the Rockies mismanaged. have given up before this trade because yeah. they have spent more money sending Nolan to the Cardinals literally paying the Cardinals to take the best third baseman in baseball than they have on any free agent acquisition in the past three years. So I look at that and I say, you know what? The situation between Breidich and Nolan was souring. They didn't get any help for him. They didn't bring in anyone to assist their issues. They blew a hundred million dollars on a horrible ball a bullpen a couple of years ago. And then from the past three years to this point forward, they spent more money sending Nolan to the Cardinals than they have on any free agent acquisition. So to me, that says, I don't care about winning. I don't care about putting a winning product on the field. All I care about is getting these butts in these seats for the least amount of money on the field that I could possibly imagine and building another bar somewhere in the ballpark. Because yeah. that's what that says to me. So I think that the Rockies have given up even before this trade and this just cherry on top. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. We just didn't necessarily fully know to the extent. And and that's one of the things where I had been giving them the benefit of the doubt of like, there's a couple of things you can do to turn this thing around. And then they just kind of go, oh, we're not interested in doing any of those things. No interest whatsoever. Even the the very soft commitment to like, we'd like to keep Trevor Story was just like, and, and I get it because they can't, they can't make a guy sign a contract and why would he? So they can't promise that thing. And so, so I get it. They're kind of in a tight spot there. And they also can't come out and say, we're going to trade him tomorrow because well, a million baseball reasons why you can't do that. But this is just so overwhelmingly a position they have painted themselves into to your point, Michaela. It's just like, it didn't have to be this way. You chose to make it this way. And, um, no, I, you know, I do see some people asking these questions about McGregor Square and, and those finances, the party deck. And he, he did speak to that honestly. And it's one of those things people don't want to hear. Doesn't have anything to do with it. That actually should make it worse for you, by the way. It's, this isn't about the party deck and McGregor Square. Those are different funds that's locked up. There's, there's taxes. It's, it's very complicated and mostly pretty boring. But that stuff actually doesn't have to do with the amount of money that Dick Montfort can spend on the baseball team. Uh, this is just a completely unforced error separate to that. You know, this is just a completely unforced error that they could have afforded McGregor Square and, and the party deck. Anyway, those things bring in more money to the organization. So the fact that they can't afford Nolan Arenado while they're getting those things is just, no, it's, um, it didn't have anything to do with that. It's just a choice. Very bad choice. <laughs> uh, what? Well, was the, uh, oh yeah, when Jeff Bright said, I think so, yes. <laughs> Does Trevor's story start the season with the Rockies? All right, we'll take that. Um, you talked about some of these other Nolan ones saying, uh, where was it here? My relationship with the Rockies is just fine. I'm not going to sit here and talk about bad things. I don't have any bad things to say. The last few years were tough in Colorado, but I did my best. Mm -hmm. Just twist that knife in there just ah oh, yeah brutal well and then he ends the press conference with um you know uh, the most kind quote that i could possibly think of for someone who's upset with an organization um and i'm trying to find it here um but it was just so complimentary like it wasn't you know if i was nolan i would be a little upset like they the rockies have burned that relationship in my mind and um you know, it's just, it's unfortunate that it had to end that way. Um, but I feel, I feel for Nolan and, you know, he was excited to be a part of the Cardinals. You know, the media was all stoked. They had an Aaron Otto jersey in the background um, of the general manager who was on the call. And uh, it was just a knife, a knife in the heart. But, um, you know, he, he ended his press conference with basically saying, I got a lot of love for Rockies fans. They have a special place in my heart and my family's heart. 
We love those fans and we appreciate the support. The only thing I would tell them is that I did my best and I gave it my all. Like, wow. Man, that just, oh, that's just, it's so because, and people have talked about, you know, comparing this to the too low thing. And there's a lot of reasons why you would. And, and there are some legitimate comparisons there. But, you know, there there were some weird feelings between Tulo and some fans and especially after he left and all of that stuff, but it's just never been that way with Nolan. Um, I've had, I've had a number of one-on-one -on -one, both on and off the record conversations with Nolan Arenado about Colorado Rockies fans. And I will tell you, there were a handful of things he was frustrated in. He told me, you can go and look this up. I'll have to find it. There's an article from a couple of years ago where he talked to me specifically about, you know, we don't always sell out the way I wish we would. And sometimes, you know, they start doing the wave at the wrong time or, or they don't always show the energy. And then when I go to a place like San Francisco or Los Angeles or St. Louis, and the fans are just so passionate about everything and they're really into the game. But he, he truly believed that Colorado could become that place where the fans were more into the game than they were to the party deck, right? And he saw that potential. And it's just sad to think now that that's going to take a huge step back because fans are so disenfranchised right now. And that's one thing that I think came through in the press conference today that they knew they didn't have an answer for that was just the fans are going to be mad at us for a long time. And we know that. And sorry, I guess. Did that? I'm not actually, you know what? Not sure I heard the word sorry. Nope. Come out of anybody's mouth now that I think about it. No, I, I mean, I didn't. And I listened to the whole thing. And to me, it just came across as they were trying to defend themselves, which I, I mentioned before. And they tried to explain it as a business decision because, um, you know, it was what can you get a greater value for? If you trade him now, you get five prospects who have potential, I guess. Um, or you can wait until the end of the season and he opts out and then you just get like, I think they said like a, a round 30 uh, pick in the draft. Something um, like that. So, you know, to me, it sounded like it was more of them trying to reason with us and with their fans about why they made that decision. But as I said before, it's an indefensible decision because it should have never gotten to the point where Nolan was so unhappy that he asked to be traded. Um, so I was listening to the Cardinals press conference as well. And, uh, you know, their GM basically came out and said, we gave up nothing and we got Nolan. He said, quote, there were a lot of names that we had that we didn't want to discuss. And we kept those names off the table and we got Nolan Arenado in return. So, you know. Translation. We didn't give in anything they wanted. We done fleeced the Colorado Rockies. And so, you know, maybe you can make this decision a little bit more excusable when you're getting two to three top 10 prospects in return. Instead, you're getting mid-level prospects. And then the team that just traded for the best third baseman in baseball is giving you nothing in return. Said, quote, we kept names off the table. Like, I, I just don't understand. And I think they need to realize that they messed up. And they are going to have a lot of angry fans for a really long time because... In my opinion, it's not defensible. There's nothing that can excuse this trade. It's nothing that can explain it, nothing that can make it better. Um, it should have never gotten to that point. You know, if Nolan is upset, then you do whatever it takes to make Nolan happy so that he stays on your team. And it's it's just mind blowing. I'm still, I still don't even know. <laughs> I, I know, I know it's been days and it's really only been official for like a few hours now, technically, but it's just, it's still hard to wrap our minds around it. But I'll, I'll tell you this. Never said this one before. Go out there. <clears throat> I don't even know what the number is. Maybe take that under it. DraftKings Sportsbook. Maybe go ahead and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Don't know where they've got the Rockies just yet. Uh, you can make great money taking the over on them most years because they tend to be underrated and, and outperform that people think they're going to be really terrible. But uh, this is, I think, only going to get worse. Uh, the, the possibility of trading Trevor's story just becomes more and more real by the day. I don't think they're gonna move out the young pitchers. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a second and some of Jeff Breidich's comments about this not being a rebuild. But 
go over to the DraftKings Sportsbook. Check them out there. If they've still got them up at like 78 wins or whatever it was, go ahead and smash that under. I'm going to go ahead and give you the, the freedom to take the under on that right now. It's going to be a, a very bad season for the Colorado Rockies unless they make a bunch of personnel changes in the next uh, three weeks. Uh, which seems highly unlikely. Uh, before that, though, if you're still not quite ready to bet against your favorite baseball team, I understand that. Maybe get in on the big game. I love this. Patrick and I did this the other day. I, I love that we have to call it the big game. It's just one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, it's just every year I go, oh, that's right. We have to do that. But they're giving all players a no-brainer of an offer right now for the big game on Sunday. If a touchdown is scored, they will double your money. That's right. Just one touchdown in the big game featuring the best teams in the world. So typically, they score touchdowns. That's what they're good at. That's how they get to the big game. They do that. You win yourself double the money you put in on your bet. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR to get a shot at doubling your money if a touchdown is scored in Sunday's game. That's right. Promo code DNVR to get a shot at doubling your money during Sunday night's finale. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash prediction dash challenge dash DFS for details. That's right. DraftKings.com slash prediction dash challenge dash DFS for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. All right. What were we talking about? Did anything happen? What, what went on this morning? All right. <laughs> How's everyone feeling? Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about what I was just talking about there a second ago, Michaela, the the not a rebuild comment. It, it does look like that the Rockies are probably only going to trade Trevor Story if they feel like they have to. They're going to make a run at re-signing him. I don't think any of us believe that's going to happen. But it doesn't sound like they have any intention of, you know, trading off John Gray, Herman Marquez, any of these other guys. And so, I mean, what does that even mean where, where are you at a point where you would rather them just tear the whole thing and, and build down or do you think well hey look some of these pitchers are still they're all like 26 years old i think that's the average of those guys right like maybe even if it's going to be a couple of years those guys will all be 29 you can still compete around them or you're not even ready to think about three years down the line when they could be competitive again and, and you just want to blow it all up and fire and brimstone rip it apart um that's a tough question because i think it's too there's too many layers of that, but I would prefer that they blow up the team, but I would prefer Jeff Reitich not be the one that reconstructs the team because I have sure. <laughs> zero faith in his ability to conduct successful trades. If you can trade the best third baseman in baseball and this is the return you get, and now you're going to try to blow everything up and rebuild from that point forward. Um, no, thank you. I don't want Jeff Reitich making any of those decisions. Yeah. So you know, I think at this point, you know, they play this season, they figure it out, they see if they're good, they see if they can compete. I don't think that they can. But if at the end of this next season, Jeff Breidich still has a job, I'm going to be not only angry, but also confused. And <laughs> I, I don't even know where you go in the direction of the team because I don't want Breidich being the one in charge of the field. Like, I don't trust him. I don't. I, I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. So what do you do? You're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either you do the half in half out thing that I said on a previous podcast where you're sitting at 500 for the next couple of years and you never really make the playoffs or you're on the edge of making the playoffs. You make it to the wild card and you get ejected in the first round. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're either going to do half and half out for the next mm -hmm. couple of seasons or you <laughs> are going to try and rebuild, but I don't want Brightish rebuilding the team. Like I don't right. trust it at all. So right. I don't know what they do. I think they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I mean, obviously, for whatever reason, Monfort thinks that Breidich is the guy. So, you know, if they are going to rebuild, Lord help us all, because they're going to trade and get rid of all of the pieces that we think they should retain and not get anything in return. And then we're going to be worse than where we are now. Does that yeah. mean? Right. No, I, I, I think that's all 100% correct, right? Like, you the, Patrick and I have even talked about this before, where even if rebuilding is the correct theoretical strategy, it's not one we trust these guys to be able to pull off in any kind of meaningful way that's actually going to produce results a couple of years from now. Again, I really wish I would have asked my follow-up about the team president situation because, you know, his answer to Woody Page's question, and I think you said this earlier, was, 
you know, I've thought about firing myself, but I haven't thought about firing Jeff Breidich. It's like, you haven't even thought about it. And I get, he's sitting right there and like that, like, okay, like that's tough to say right to the guy's face, but we were having a very honest and frank conversation. Really everything had been on the table for a minute there and they were doing pretty good about it. So I'll take him at his word that he's not considered firing Jeff Breidich. And it's like, come on, man. Like, and and I, even as the person who says this is more about Dick Monfort than it is about Jeff Breidich, as Breidich said today, and, and as we've talked about here, and as the comment earlier from Kenneth, who's in with another one, you know, he made this bed. And, and he did at least admit to that. Like, ultimately, he said it's the general manager's job to keep the team competitive. And I didn't do that. It's like, correct. And if, and if that's really the thing, but if the other question that was asked, you know, which is, well, and, and yeah, how, who do you even replace them with? There's a lot of people out there. Bring someone in from outside the organization. Literally anyone um, at this point. Me, I'll do it. <laughs> any of you people in the comments, I trust you more than I touch Bre trust Breidich. Literally, Matt, you know. Eric, and Kenneth. I hired. don't care. <laughs> that Literally, equates to more people than we've got in the analytics department. <laughs> oh, I mean, and I, I just, I think there's no other way to describe this entire thing than an organiza organizational failure. Point blank, period. Right up to the bottom organizational failure. I mean, right. they don't even have people in their analytics department, do they? They they got rid of them or they left or they fought or they were fired, right? They just lost some people in their analytics department. Yeah, like like four people left. Also, a bunch of people in communications left at the beginning of the off season and largely decided, you know, moving on to, you know, personal things in their lives, which again, I I, I take them at their words for it, but I can understand why maybe Warren Miller didn't want to stick around and continue to be the communications director through this disaster. Corey Little, you're an angel and we love you. This isn't your fault. Thank you for taking care of us. And and everyone be nice to at Rockies also. Please that, be nice to at Rockies. Uh, yeah. It's and you would know better than I I would. You really know the pain of that. But this isn't at don't don't at the Rockies when you're when you're sure at us at dnvr rockies and say what's going on here and throw all this stuff because because the the people that run that first of all and, and i know them all quite well they're they're just they're wonderful people they work Absolutely. really really hard and they don't get to participate in any of those meetings so i will say though i took a curious browse through the at rockies mentions last time they posted the thread about no the video that they made and yeah. i was shocked at how many people were like social media team this isn't your fault you know but we still are upset. Like I've never seen fans of an organization react so well. And they're aware of the fact that they're, it's not the social media team's fault. I was very proud of Rockies fans. So thank you guys for being so kind to add Rocky social media team. It's not their fault. I promise. But I mean, top down, it's an organizational failure. I don't, there's just no other way to describe it. There's no other way to look at it. It's a failure of seismic proportions and it's all because it's a top down mess. Well, if you want to show your support for Nolan Arenado and not necessarily the Rockies, because, well, not at all the Rockies, because <clears throat> you're not spending money at the Rockies store or at MLB.com or any of that. If you buy $5 shirts from us, that's right. It sounds like, according to the woman who would know, our sales director, Lindsay Sauer, our Nolan being Nolan shirts are now five bucks. So you can pick those up, uh, get a whole bunch of them, give them out to the whole family and wear them when you go out and boycott <laughs> with your <laughs> torches and pitchforks outside of Coors Field. Make sure you've got your Nolan being Nolan shirt. Otherwise, how will they know why you're there? <laughs> oh my God, that would be epic. Can we all please just buy Nolan merch and just go to the ballpark and just sit there and don't make any noise and just be mad? <laughs> right, just, just. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yeah, a failure of management, a failure of the organization, a system wide. Um, and even if they couldn't put their finger on it, exactly where the relationship broke down. And look, I understand that uh, adult human beings often get that. I, I think when we look at other people, we go, how could it possibly have gotten to that point? But most of us have had a relationship or two in our lives that we ourselves go, man, how did I let it get to that point? Right. But that's that's where in a professional setting, like an organization this large that has 
millions of people's emotions and investments tied into them, why you need somebody in the room to step up and go, guys, knock it the F off. Like this is ridiculous. And that no one was able to be the adult in the room. And that, as you put it, everyone's still around and no changes have been made. And that's why I asked Dick Monfort point blank, is your role for this team going to change? And while I thought he gave a, a decent answer, his sort of denial that he's really that involved in baseball moves to begin with and him saying basically like, no, I don't think it's really going to change. I'm going to try. I just had to get involved in this one because it was a little bit unique. And it's just like back to your foot in, foot out, man. Just how do you convince the fans you're, that winning is your top priority? Because yeah. it just very clearly isn't right now. And that was the weirdest part, I guess, was him trying to sell everybody on like, hey, well, now we've got an opportunity for these young guys to play. No one believes in these young players more than me. Nobody. I'm not even sure, honestly, that Dick Monfort believes in Ryan McMahon and, and Brendan Rodgers and Ryan El Tapia more than I do. I, I'm not sure that's true. And they're going to get to play. And honestly, I'll, I won't be shocked if they drag that team to 80 wins just because a couple of those guys pop and it's a little more fun than we think it's going to be. And he pointed to the Trevor Story analogy when Story filled in for Tulo and that saved their asses. And boy, is he counting on that to happen. Because if it doesn't, this just gets way, way worse. And I don't know, Michaela, 100 losses. Do they have to play 100? If they play 154 games, because they still get to 100 losses with the roster as currently constituted. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's an honest I, answer there. You know, there's just so much to the team that uh, unfortunately is working against them. Um, a majority of their players are so young um, and experience is everything in baseball. Um, you know, Scott or Scott Oberg is coming off an injury, so we don't know about him. Um, you know, they just um, – I'm trying to find something positive to <laughs> <laughs> Their new first baseman, presumably, will be someone who will probably feel fine about the way they treated his cousin with the question coming in here from Matthew. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, what is, what is Josh? No, Josh, I'll tell you this. We've we've gotten to know Josh a little bit, and, and largely Patrick. Patrick Lyons has, has really gotten to know Josh. And like his cousin, he'll come out to play. Like, dude, you know what Josh has had to go through just to get to the big leagues? Like, he's not going to start phoning it in or hang his head and go, oh, gosh, I'm sad about my cousin. I guess I'm going to play bad. Like, Josh trying to earn a contract and a spot and prove his damn self. So, yeah. uh, I, but it stuff like that lingers, you know, that's yeah. less of a problem I think for right now than what happens if Josh turns out to be a pretty damn good ball player. And okay. then a couple of years from now, we're talking about him as a free agent or any of these other guys, McMahon, Rogers, gray. Why would gray want to resign here? You know what? It's well, not just Trevor's I'm story. Yeah, that's what I think I'm worried about more than anything. Well, not more than anything. I'm most worried about Breitich still being the GM. But the next thing that I'm worried about after Breitich still being in charge is the domino effect that this has on the rest of the team. Does it negatively impact the locker room culture? You know, are guys scared now to say anything to Breitich because, well, if our relationship gets bad, I'm the next out the door, um, you know, or does it say, does it send a message to the clubhouse that says, you know, we don't really care about winning. So, you know, whatever you do or you don't do, that's up to you, but we don't really care. So I'm just scared about this domino effect that this move is going to have. And to sit, to think that it's not going to have any effect, I think is naive because Nolan was a leader in the locker room. Those guys looked up to him. His talent spoke for itself. You know, he didn't have to prove himself to anybody because what he did on the field was enough. But on top of what he did on the field, he was split and a an amazing human being. You know, he cared. He showed that he cared. He supported his teammates. He was a leader in the clubhouse. And so, you know, if this has a negative effect on the clubhouse, like it's only downhill from here. And I'm really trying not to be negative or pessimistic. Like I'm still going to watch the game. Oh, you game. don't have to try. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, there, there, yeah. has to be, there is going to be lasting effects from this move. And, you know, the, the future of the Rockies is very much in limbo because if I'm Trevor Story, I don't want to play for this team. I'm hightailing it out of there my first chance. And I'm hoping that's not his mentality. And I hope that the Rockies can salvage whatever they have left and they can get the support of the clubhouse to really try to rally around this decision, which I don't know if they can. But, you know, I just, 
I'm worried about the domino effect because I think it's going to really, really affect the team and the culture and the environment. And you can't have a successful team when nobody believes in it. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to take a while, a long while, a couple of years at the very least to wash the stink of this off the team, unless they catch lightning in a bottle with these young guys and really, because it is the one thing in sports, I will say as bad as everyone feels about it now, no one was talking about Troy Tulowitzki in 2017. And that was just two years after that trade had ripped out people's hearts. So when you win, if you win, I should say, it, it does like, that's just, that's just the business we're in. It's the game we're in. Um, yeah. Trevor coming in and saying, I'm sad and a little frustrated to be honest. And <laughs> that's, for, for Trevor's story, that's like dropping five F-bombs, just so you know. Yeah. Like for those of you that have never had a conversation with Trevor's story, that's basically the equivalent of saying, <laughs> him, him going on a, a tirade. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated right now. Like, Trevor, are you... <laughs> whoa, 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 spicy. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it just, it's, uh, that's the one thing I, I will say if, for those of you searching for hope or just trying to imagine a day when. I will say the day will come. Maybe it won't be two years from now. Maybe it will be five years from now. Maybe it'll be eight years from now. There's a very small chance it could be this year. It probably won't be. But where that happens, where they just, they win some ball games, some fun things, it, it won't be. Um, and some fun things happen and, and you do start to get over it. But that's the point that you're making here, Michaela, is that, is that until that happens, this is everyone's just going to feel terrible. And the highest likelihood is that it's not going to happen this year. It's probably not going to happen the year after. And so everyone's just going to feel sick about this team for a while. And it's just like, man, you know, and, and like you said, if there aren't further moves, if Trevor Story walks and John Gray walks because they're free agents at the end of this next season and they can't come to terms on extensions with guys like Kyle Freeland or maybe McMahon has been good and and they want to do that or whatever. And Jeff Breidich is still trying to rebuild now a, a 2022 team. And we're going, what? In We learned nothing. We've changed nothing. Yeah, it's like, overwhelming to think about. Like it's, I don't know how to, <laughs> I just know how to process it because like, it's a lot to think about, but like all of these implications are like hitting us now because now we see, okay, this deal is done. Nolan is gone. So where do we go from here? And any way that you look at this point, it's hard to have a positive outlook on any of it because there's no way that this doesn't negatively impact the entire organization that is already not doing very well. And, you know, back to your point earlier about bringing in someone in between Monfort and Breidich, like a president of baseball operations, like, um, you know, I think that's one step of many that they need to take in order to get back on track because, you know, um, I was part of a club that had that, you know, the um, the Diamondbacks have Mike Hazen and then Derek Hall is in between um, Ken Kendrick, the owner. And, you know, I feel like that's like the only way to really have a well-functioning baseball team because that relationship was symbiotic and they were able to kind of make the tasks of owning or managing a team more um, manageable between the three of them. And so, you know, I think some positive signs moving forward is, you know, they need to bring in someone in between Breidich and Monfort if Breidich is going to stay around. I think he still needs to go for anything positive to happen. But if he's going to stay, they need to bring in someone between Breidich and Monfort. And then, you know, they need to spend the money that they're saving from Nolan's contract on help. They need help. They need to get help. This roster right now is not built for long-term success, especially in the shop environment. Really no and, term. <laughs> yeah. That's something that was asked in a press conference was, you know, now that you're saving all this money from this Nolan trade, like, are you going to be bringing in, um, you know, help for this team? Oh, and of course, that. the answer was no. Right. To figure right. out. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's the that's funny because that was going to be my question. I'm actually glad my guy Ed Henderson from KOA took that one, so I could ask the slightly spicier one directly to the owner. Um, but but that was actually the thing I wanted to know the most was like, can you give fans any reassurance that the money that you saved on this deal is going to be reinvested in the team, and if so, when? 
because and now he said something about how some of the reporting about the particular financials which are already very confusing by the way isn't quite right and so at some point patrick and i are going to have our guy andre simone on we'll, we'll run through the contracts we'll really dive into the numbers of it because it it is a little bit confusing but it, you know ultimately it doesn't sound like in the immediate they've saved any money at all again he said what's been reported isn't entirely accurate but what's been reported <laughs> is that for this upcoming season the trade of nolan Arenado hasn't saved him any money it's about the years beyond that where it does and so <laughs> yeah to, to your question like they were asked like so are you gonna just try to go out and sign anybody to make the team better or, or do anything here and the answer to that question was basically uh we'll make an effort what, what, what did jeff say he said we'll talk to some agents we'll talk about some of these things we'll try to figure some of this stuff out but we can't guarantee anything, which is the same answer he's given to that question, honestly, for every off season since we've had the opportunity to ask him the question. Like, yeah, they have ongoing conversations with agents. We get it. And I understand he doesn't want to give us specifics, but if they straight up just roll into the season, uh, you know, it, it is still the fact that they saved about $150 million over the course of the deal by trading Nolan Arenado, but not yet. And so what? <laughs> like, that's the question, right? It, they, they don't have that money. It's not like they, they have 150 million extra dollars in their bank account the day after the trade than they did before the trade. It's money that will be saved over the course of the rest of that deal. But is that going to be spent on the team? If so, how? If so, when? And, you know, that I, I don't know that they even necessarily have a plan for. So it's like we got Sorry, Michaela guys. back in there. But <laughs> My Wi-Fi is just as bad as Jeff Freitich's gym skills. I <laughs> Oh, man. But, yeah, I, I, I think that's sort of the my biggest sort of on-field or, or, or what's next question that I'm wondering, right, is – uh, because at some point we do have to move into a territory. We're going to cover all the games this year. We're going to be right there for you every day. Follow us on social media, smash the like and subscribes and all that stuff. We really appreciate it. And we're going to have to talk about like, who is this team? What does it look like? At some point, the money they saved on Nolan Arenado is going to have to be spent. And I'd love to know if there's any thought about how to do it, or if it really was like, well, let's just get the money. And then we'll think about that later. Cause again, it's like, have a plan have a semblance of a plan, have an outline. I'm not the biggest outline guy in the world, but have an outline of a plan. Something, you know, a good guiding light would be helpful in this situation. But I mean, I, I don't know what I missed when I cut out, but you know, his answer to how they're going to spend the money now that they're saving um, on Nolan was just so concerning because I don't think they have a plan. I don't think that they have any semblance of idea of what the future for this organization looks like. And, you know, he said something about, well, now that spring training is officially starting on the 17th, like we're up against a tighter deadline. And to me, that basically just said, we don't have a plan about spending money. Sorry, hate to do it to you, but don't expect anything. Um, and it's just, uh, it's unfortunate because I don't feel like there's a captain of the ship right now and the ship is sinking very fast. Right. It, it really, really is. Sam asking, how do you cover a team that seems inept? That must be hard. That's... That's roughly the same as you cover any other team. There's plenty of stuff going on. I'll tell you that much. You know what's harder than covering a team that's this inept is covering a team that isn't doing anything at all or covering a league that isn't doing anything at all. So we'll be fine, though. We appreciate your concern there, Sam. At the very least, we've got plenty of things to talk about for a minute here. Um, Kenneth treating us to another super chat. Maybe just wanting to think about something else for a second. So let's all give ourselves a minute. This is an important meditation technique I've learned over the years. Put your brain somewhere else for a minute. What are the chances Freeland has a rebound year? I think pretty high. I do think one of the things, if you're looking for silver linings of a move like this that can sometimes happen is a lot of pressure comes off of all these young guys who are expected to help in some, and guys do see it this way. You know, you're on a team and you're and the best players on your team are these legends who are after the championship. And so if you're Kyle Freeland and John Gray, especially earlier in your careers, you know, 
you see it not just as trying to win, but also trying to help Nolan win. And now that you don't really have that guy there and the team doesn't have expectations to compete, you can kind of just go out and play and just play your best game. And so I wouldn't be shocked if there's a handful of guys and Freeland seems like one of them who could be set up to have really good years. It's not going to mean that your Rockies win a lot of games, but those will be some days that'll be fun to enjoy at the ballpark. I would expect some good Kyle Freeland this year. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think um, Kyle Freeland still has a major upside that we have yet to see. And um, I think he's determined to win. And I think he's determined to, you know, prove himself after the bumpy past he's had. So um, I'm not too worried about Kyle Freeland. And I do think he has a lot of potential and a lot of upside. So I'm excited to um, kind of see him on the mound this year and see what he has for us. Steve is a, a new Rockies fan. So I am so sorry. So, sorry about that. I don't, I don't, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us, though. We really appreciate it. We'll be here every day. So if you're trying to make sense of it, you know, so are we. Uh, <laughs> Zeke uh, saying, um, what is it? We, we know it's not going to be free agency. I don't think anyone will want to sign extensions. So there's not going to be anywhere to spend the money. And that's what I think is true for right now. And that's why this is going to suck mm-hmm. for a little while. A year from now, yeah. I think that will have, have loosened up a little bit. But yeah. Like, well, and one thing that one thing that Breitich said, too, in the press conference was um, when someone asked him about spending money now that they're saving um, for from from Nolan's contract is we've had some agents call us. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. What agent they- of a baseball player that's really a free agent is calling you? Because if I was a baseball player that was a free agent, the Rockies are last on my list of places that I want to play right now. So <laughs> I will I will say, um, you know, little- money is better than not money. And most of these guys uh, and playing for a big league team technically is better than not playing for a big league team uh but you just made me think do the rockies not know that phones work both ways maybe that's what this is all really about like i think we've gotten to the bottom of it it's, they didn't know they could call nolan and have a conversation they don't know they can call other teams agents they just waited for daniel murphy's agent to call them the way they talked about dj lemay like we knew we wanted to stay but we knew we wanted a long-term deal no conversations were had why not call him up and say Hey, let's see if we can figure that. They don't know that phones work both ways. I I figured it out. I finally (laughs) understand their communication problem. They only think people are allowed to call them. Communication is a two-way street, everyone, just in case you're curious. (laughs) Money is better than not money. That is also Monver's catchphrase. (laughs) Right, right. I threw two of them. Yeah, money is better than not money. And I'll I'll tell you what, these guys will will take some, they'll take some gigs, but boy, is that, you're right. Like anyone who has other options isn't going to choose the Colorado Rockies. What is attractive about this team? Is anything, can you tell me anything that is attractive for a player to want to come play here? Well, living in Denver is very nice. It's beautiful, beautiful out here. The ballpark is nice. Um, and it's better than not having a job at all. Yeah, those are the things. Th- those cool. are the big things. Big yeah. driving factors, you know, some real yeah. motivation. <laughs> and then again, theoretically, Dick Monfort might give you some money, but he seems disinclined to do that these days. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy <laughs> on the might. You never yeah. know what's going <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. So, uh, Eric, mm-hmm. no, the Rockies should not consider moving to Las Vegas. I'm keeping my team. I don't care how terrible they are. They've been terrible before. Uh, whatever, like, again, well, we're, we're all going to get through this together, but I'm not going to get on board the let's move the team. Let's sell the team to someone who wants to move it. Let's, you know, start doing any of this other stuff. Like, nah, we need Colorado and baseball and uh, what? Nope. Baseball in Colorado. See, they yeah. got us all flustered. They're the awful, but they're our awful Rockies. <laughs> yeah, they're our, that's so good. There's a shirt. Hey, D line. Is Eric in here? Eric. He's, he's going to hang out with us later. They're our awful Rockies. That's exactly right. Pretty sunsets at Coors. Anthony knows what's up, right? Uh, players who hit 15 home runs who want to hit 25 home runs. So that doesn't really work. More, it's going to increase your doubles as much as anything. You want to hit more home runs. You got to go to those AL short. ballparks or the short yeah. porch. Yeah. Short porches, baby. But you want to jack up that batting average, come on out to Coors Field, baby. Uh, yeah, that's just uh, 
<laughs> Vicky's ready to buy her. <laughs> the, but, all right, D-line, that's one. We've sold one shirt already. It doesn't even exist. So uh, let me look through my notes before we sign off here. I think we got to wrap this up. Let us know if you've got any further questions. Again, the great stuff here. You got to make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. You hit the like button. I think the bell icon will let you know when we're going live so that you never miss out on these conversations, especially you know when we have to do them like today when it, it just kind of they announced last night, hey, press conference in the morning and we're kind of scrambling an emergency conversation. So uh, uh, Patrick Lyons sending us this little note that only Desmond Story, McMahon and Blackman have hit over 20 home runs in a season on this roster. So even if you're looking for, hey, there will be some fun offensive nights at Coors Field, right? It's like, there will be three or four, <laughs> probably. Uh, oh, here you go. Jake coming in with it. This is fantastic. Where is that? The DNVR bar will be getting more of my money than the Rockies in the near future. We can't, we can't argue with that. If you want to <laughs> come out and nope. sort of participate in Rockies community, but not necessarily give those guys your money, we, we can be a, a home for you. You can come hang out with us. and We'll be drowning our sorrows in bread <laughs> Totally. <laughs> All right. Um, final thoughts, feelings, impressions, hopes, desires, despairs, existential crises that you'd like to share with us. Michaela, anyone in the comments? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess just to wrap it up, I'm just sad. Um, it's a hard day to <laughs> yeah. be a rock fan. Yeah. I have been lucky enough to be born and raised in this wonderful state of Colorado. So um, blessed or cursed with a lifetime fandom of the Rockies, you know, whatever way you want to look at it, but I'm just sad. And I would feel a lot better about it if I felt like the Rockies had a captain of their ship that's sinking, but they don't. And, you know, I think there's going to be a time where they're going to have to look at the mirror in the mirror and see that they aren't running the ship at all and that they are not the people or the right people to run the ship. And until they can either look in the mirror and understand that they're not doing their job well, or they need to bring someone else in to do a better job, it's going to be a long, <laughs> a long time until I will not feel sad anymore. So, you know, um, it's just sad. And I feel I feel for Rockets fans. I really do. I know what you guys are going through and I know it's hard to be fans of a team that continually slap you in the face. Um, you know, I think it's going to have to turn around at some point, whether that's in the future, short, in the short future, the long future, short term, long term, um, it, it will turn around. It has to, I mean, Oh Lord, help us. Like we, <laughs> We need to get some positivity in this organization, but um, I feel for you guys and I know what you're going through because I'm in the same boat you are. I try to take some of my emotions out of it, but it's hard when, you know, you've been a fan for so long. So stick in there. You know, if you choose not to support the Rockies by going to the ballpark, I totally understand. I feel that. Um, but just know that there are still guys on the team that are worth supporting. And, you know, it's not their fault that they're on a team that can – just is not managed well. So, um, you know, if you find any joy in baseball at all and you find it in your heart to support the the boys that are still on the roster, I really recommend you do it because, you know, they're going to need our support too. So it's okay to be sad. We're all in this together. I promise you we're not going to blow smoke up your butts and try to make you feel better about a really sad situation. But, um, you know, I think uh, I just got to hang in there. Yeah, I, I think that point you made about the players is one of the things I've seen a lot of people holding on to it. I think somebody even was using the hashtag like support the players, uh, you know, and I, I think that's an interesting, uh, good way to look at it because you're right. Like it's not you know, Garrett Hampson's fault. <laughs> this is going on and, and he's out there. He's going to go out there. And he's going to try to do his best. And so it, it might seem kind of weird to say, like, can you root for Garrett Hampson or Sam Hilliard or Ryan McMahon or Brendan Rogers without rooting for the Rockies? Right. And that's that's a tough place. And it's, a, it's something everyone's got to answer for themselves. I, I'm going to draw what I hope is not a, a completely insensitive analogy here, but it's just a phrase that came to my mind from our nation's history, which is, I'm not against the soldiers. I'm against the war, right? And just whatever, like pick one, but right, there's this kind of like, 
Y'all are the soldiers. The ball players are are the soldiers. Kenneth, uh, that's another great question. Bud Black, in a way, also a soldier here. He, you know, he signed a contract to come in and try to make on-field decisions to make the Colorado Rockies as competitive as they can be. And while, yeah, he helps make some of the baseball decisions too. He's at this point, he's just got to do the best with what he can, and he's going to have to come out and give daily press conferences here before too long where Monfort and Breidich speak to us once every five months or so, you know, and, and so again, I, I hope that not too much of this rage is directed at him or the ball players. And, and it's a tough separation. Like I said, if you, if you, if in your mind, there's no way to be like, I'm not rooting for the Rockies, but I still want Trevor story and Sam Hilliard and Ryan McMahon and John Gray and Herman Marquez to do well, which would ultimately mean the Rockies may be winning some games. And I'm kind of not, I don't care about that. I'm not going to buy tickets and I don't want to buy jerseys because I don't want to support it's I get it, man. It's all, it's all right there. But I do think there's a way to, to say, support the players as best you can. Maybe do it by coming out to the DNVR bar though. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, like I said drowning our drowning our sorrows in Breck brews. <laughs> uh, there you go, Carrie. Saying I'm still gonna watch you guys every game, but my yeah guys tweets will also include the fire Breitich tag. So I know there you me. have we it. You can live <laughs> live both ways. That's right. That's right, David. A little bit of a catch twenty two, but we're all gonna work through it together. So like we said, we'll, we'll be here. We are gonna do another podcast at our normal time this afternoon at four o'clock. Uh, D line. Eric Weedham's going to be by to share some of his thoughts. Michaela, it sounds like, is probably going to be back sharing more. There's other angles here. Of course, we'll have Patrick Lyons for you. Uh, plenty other shows coming up throughout the week. Drew Goodman will be joining us on Thursday. You know we got the DFA show on Wednesday. We're going to do another fan panel on Friday featuring the guys from the Avalanche podcast and maybe somebody from over on the golf side because everyone's got to get this all out, and, and we're just trying to do what all of you out there are, are doing, which is, talk through this thing together because the only way this could be worse than it is is if we didn't have this community to come to right is if all of us were doing this alone so uh, we promise we're going to be here through all of it and we appreciate that all of you uh, continue to be thank you so much for uh, subscribing to the youtube channel hanging out with us on facebook and twitter subscribing to the dnvr.com so you don't miss any of the written content plus when you do that you get discounts on hats and shirts and Mask. You get a bigger beer when you come down to the DNVR bar for Avalanche and Nuggets watch parties. Soon, Colorado, we're not actually watching it. We're just peering out of the corner of our eyes watch parties. We're not really supporting it, but we're keeping up on the team watch parties. We'll, 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 we'll brand that a little bit better. But And David, yes, I agree. More Michaela. Uh, we're, we're super <laughs> excited uh, for Mac to be giving us her thoughts regularly on this program. You guys are stuck with me now, so hopefully that's, that's okay. Right. <laughs> Uh, oh man, Kenneth, you're, you're about to sign off, but you're coming in with a super chat with a great question that maybe Patrick and I will be able to dive into more deeply later too, about players staying in college. If they get drafted by the Rockies, that's like another level of deeper consideration about what Mac was talking about earlier, right? Of guys not wanting to sign as free agents or not wanting to stay. Yeah. Now you've got guys that maybe you draft them in the second round and they go, you know, another year of school wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> So like, I just, there, yeah, the, the ramifications of this continue to be far reaching. And that means we'll have more to talk about it throughout the rest of the week, throughout the rest of the off season, probably deep into the season. And it's always best when we can do it with all of you. So like I said, follow on social media, hang out with us in the discord. If you're subscribed to the dnvr.com and just keep being absolutely awesome. Even though you're absolutely sad, I promise you. We will keep being absolutely Michaela Perkins, Andrew Creaseman. And until next time, we will see you at the ballpark.